All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my story and where my journey is heading. Let's talk about what's going on in the world. There are 143 million orphans in the world today, and I believe that's too many. I want to share with you how God has called me to do something about that number and how you can partner with me in that. My eyes were really open to what's going on in the world when I was in high school, a senior in high school. I was involved with a club on campus called Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and we had a Bible study that met once a week. And at one of our Bible studies, a group of college kids came and showed us a documentary called Invisible Children. Uh, this documentary absolutely changed my view of the world. They, it showed, it documented the LRA, this rebel group in northern Uganda that would do unspeakable things to the people there. And what they would do is they would kidnap kids and turn them into child soldiers and make them do horrific things. And so what we watched was the story of several kids that would travel from the villages and the outlying regions into the cities every night to find safety from these rebel groups and the torment and the torture that was going on to them even in those cities that were supposedly safe. And so as a senior in high school when I saw this, I was totally blown away by what was going on in the world and it really gave me a heart to see some positive change, especially for these children. And so that really prompted me in 2007 to take a peace trip with my church called Saddleback Church. And we went to Rwanda to partner with the church there and to help them promote some, some spiritual growth. One of the awesome opportunities that we had there was to just work with the children. Uh, we were able to, to spend a lot of time working with them, getting to know them, connecting with them, playing games with them. It was really incredible, especially to work with the street kids that were there. There was one little group of street kids. Here's one of them right here on the left. His name is Bosco. And this group of street kids we hung out with just about every day. And we played soccer with them. We went to church with them. We really connected with them and had an awesome time. And one of the kids in particular really stuck out and really connected and was really an incredible child. And his name is Radio. We, he's, his name was too hard for us to pronounce. He always had a little radio with him. You can see it there. So we, we called him Radio. And he's a beautiful boy. He's about 12 years old and uh, so gifted, so charming, so intelligent. Uh, yet he lived on the streets and didn't go to school and would beg for food and money every day. And so uh, when we returned home, a buddy of mine who was on that team returned to Rwanda to continue to work with the church and work with the street kids. And he connected with Radio when he got back. And shortly after he got back to Rwanda, we got an urgent email saying, you have to send some money quick. Radio is sick. So we sent some money out there, and then we got word shortly after that that Radio had passed away due to HIV. And this beautiful, charming, wonderful, talented boy, I believe, did not live the life that God intended him to live, in that he deserved more and he deserved better. You must agree that this may be the way things are, but I don't believe it's the way things should be, and I don't believe it's the way things have to be. And so that experience really affected me and really has shaped me and my journey and where I'm headed. And after Rwanda, I transferred down to San Diego State uh, and got really connected to a wonderful church called Flood down there. This is me and the Flood staff. My senior year at San Diego State, I was an intern with Flood. And, and through Flood, I got connected with Children of the Nations. Children of the Nations is an incredible ministry that partners with many churches and it's incredible because Flood has a real heart to see its body connected and mobilized to be involved in serving and, and working towards a greater and better world. And COTN with its wonderful ministry and raising these children all over the world offers them the opportunity to do that. And so that's where I got the incredible opportunity to be an intern for Children of the Nations in Uganda for two months this last summer. Uganda was an incredible experience and absolutely changed my life. And I really got to experience what Children of the Nations is all about. And Children of the Nations' vision is raising children who transform nations. That's me and a couple of our kids there and our Uncle Jeffrey, who's one of the volunteers. And uh, what COTN does is incredible. We create a stable community around orphan and destitute children in six countries that we're currently working in. And we do this through many programs, mainly through our village partnership programs and our uh, children's village programs. And by doing this, in how we do this, we partner with nationals. We partner with the local church and people that are there 
and they come together and we facilitate them to raise these orphans and these destitute children holistically, making them our kids. We look after them now in order that they may grow up in a healthy environment with everything they need in order to grow to be sustainable and well-developed. And so we believe strongly in that the best resource that each one of these nations have are these young children. And so we seek to take the worst of the worst that wouldn't make it without any help. And we seek to raise them uh, in a Christ-centered, holistic, loving environment. And so the, our strategy in doing that, and COTN's strategy in doing that, is to mobilize a movement of people. It's not just a group here and there. It's a whole group of people all over the world doing this. And so when I was living in COTN, Uganda, these are some of the wonderful kids I got to live with all summer. And this child in particular, Dennis Omara, is a wonderful boy. And his story really touched me, and my experiences with him were incredible. So I want to share a little bit of that. Uh, Dennis is a wonderful boy. And when COTN brought him in to our children's village, he was raising his two little brothers. And he was defending them from whoever and whatever came along. And Dennis is a fierce boy. He is a warrior, and he, you can tell he has a real protective nature about him. And uh, Pastor James, who's the head of the program in Uganda, was telling me one day that he, when he went to Barlonio, which is an internally displaced people's camp where Dennis was living, he found Pasasco, his little brother right there, keeping vigil at the mass grave almost every day. And that mass grave is where his father was buried. His father was Dennis's father, their father was a soldier who was killed fighting those rebels that came to attack the camp, those same ones that that Invisible Children documentary was made about. And so Dennis would protect his little brothers. Here's his other brother, Robin, who's an incredible boy, uh, really gifted, all of them. And so it was so great to go and be part of Children of the Nations Uganda and see the loving environment and how what an impact that's having on kids like Dennis who are able to grow up. And Dennis still looks after his brothers, but now he's got a lot more of them to look after. Here's uh, one of our other children, Alan, and he's a wonderful little guy, one of our youngest boys at the Children's Village in Uganda. And you can see here, you can see Dennis's incredible heart and his incredible loving brotherly nature and how he's carrying his little brother Alan around on his shoulders. And it was so great to be able to live with all these boys this summer. Here's a couple of my guys right there. And I have so many great memories of walking through the cassava fields and watching the boys play soccer and playing soccer with them. and. One instance in particular was great. The local village kids came and challenged our COTN kids to a soccer game, and our boys beat them 3-1. Dennis was an incredible athlete. He was out there leading the way. And so there were so many wonderful experiences. Another one was, in this slide, as sums it up, is that Dennis is a leader. And you can see Dennis leading the boys right here. They're going to look for one of our goats that got out in the middle of the night. So the next day, Dennis gathered the boys around and said, so we're going to go out and find our lost goat. And I got to watch Dennis, the leader, the man growing up before my eyes, lead these boys out to go find that lost goat. And that was incredible. And Chris and Debbie Clark, who are the founders of Children of the Nations, have seen that boys, especially like Dennis, who know where they've been and where they're from and who understand the gift of a new life that they've been given, there's something really powerful that happens there. There's an indelible mark of knowing they're a recipient of that new life and that these children carry with them. And so we are confident in these children and their ability to transform these nations. And, and I'm so confident that Dennis one day is not only going to be a leader in his family and his community, but he's really going to be a leader in his nation. And he's going to seek to offer that new life to others. And so this was a beautiful time. This was our very last night at the Children's Village after being there for two months. And you can see Dennis kind of has a sad look on his face. He's there behind me. And I was really sad, and he, he came up behind me, and he said, don't be sad. Don't be sad that you're leaving. Don't cry. It's okay. And so that, to me, just exemplifies this child's heart, and I'm so happy that he is now in that loving, safe environment where he's getting to go to school, and he's getting to grow, and he's, being, and he's able to thrive. And I'm so excited for Dennis's potential to be a leader in his nation in the future. And so when I came home from Uganda, I, I known that God had put so many things on my heart, and I wanted to continue to pursue that life that God had given me a glimpse of. And so what I did is, is I went up into the mountains and, and took a weekend by myself up there to really connect with God and to, to seek guidance for where I was heading. I, I went up there and I prayed for, for guidance, having just graduated and come home from, from all my epic journeys. I, I prayed, God, give me, give me guidance in my career in grad school and where I'm supposed to live and what I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to make of my life, especially after having gone through all that in Uganda. And, 
And what happened was really incredible. So I was up in Sequoia National Park where these giant sequoia trees are. And I'm up there hiking around and I'm praying through all the stuff that God has given me. And as I'm standing under one of these giant sequoia trees, a little pine cone falls all the way down from the top and lands right in front of me. And I picked it up and I was simply amazed that God could take something so small as one of those pine cones and grow it into something as big as one of those trees. And later on, when I was sitting by the fire and I was talking to God, and, and I really believe God spoke to me. And, and He said, you know, all those things that are on your heart, there's a reason you want those. Those are good things. But you need to follow me. He gave me Matthew 6, and He said, first seek my kingdom and my righteousness, and all these things are going to be given to you as well. And He said, Exodus 33, 15, you need to... To, you don't want to go anywhere without me. And he said, you follow me and you follow the things that I put on your heart, the small, solid things I've given you to do. And one day those will grow up into great big things. And so I resolved when I went, I came down from that trip and I decided I'm going to pursue the things that God has put on my heart, especially in Uganda when I was there. And one of them was to, to raise money for our children there, to buy them a van because they had some transportation needs. And so I partnered with my Bible study and I said, hey guys, this is what I need to do. Come with me. And they were incredible and we rallied and we put on a Christmas tree fundraiser to raise $1,200, which is not nearly enough to buy a van. But another donor came in and gave $20,000, which was incredible. Uh, but through that, uh, God made good on His promise. And, and through that fundraiser and through seeking after God first, uh, I believe God has led me to this new position, my new role with Children of the Nations. I talked with the staff of COTN about my gifts and my future and where I was headed, and they offered me a position as a community representative. And so I have a tremendous opportunity now to, to affect the lives of our kids and to serve my community as well, and I'm so excited about that. Uh, my new role is a community representative, and so I've got the opportunity to give everybody the opportunity to partner in this incredible ministry. And I'm going to be doing this by sharing the vision of, with churches, schools, clubs, businesses, passionate individuals, and anybody who is excited about this. And my role is really crucial because, like I said earlier, we're a movement of people who are mobilizing to, to raise these children. And so it takes a lot of people, and, and there's a lot of hearts that need to be connected, and there's a lot of people that have the desire to be connected with these children in this ministry. And so my goal is to be able to create relationships and partnerships that are going to allow our children to grow and allow people the opportunity to serve, just like Flood Church, for example, who sponsors hundreds of kids and sends several trips a year and sponsors several initiatives. And the idea being that by investing in me, I'm going to go out there and multiply your investment, and I'm going to connect more hearts to the ministry, allowing it to raise these children. And so in order for me to accomplish this, I'm going to need people who are going to run alongside me on this journey, and it really is going to be a partnership. Uh, here's some ways that I would love for you to partner with me in prayer, referrals, and financial support. I absolutely believe in the power of the prayer, and I ask that you connect with me and that we share our prayer needs and our prayer lives and that we walk in this journey together. Referrals, in order for me to accomplish this, I'm going to need more people to walk alongside me and to connect with me in this ministry. So I would love for you to refer me and introduce me to people who you think will have a heart for this ministry. Financial support. Children of the Nations is a 100% missionary organization meaning that I am going to be raising my salary through the grace and blessing of the Lord and having people walk alongside me in order for me to cover everything that's going to be needed in my ministry and in my ministry expenses. If you'd like to partner with me financially, here's how you can do that. Hi, people of America. Hello, people of America. We are so glad to receive your message. And we, are, we have to send Chris to bring our greeting to you, and we say, we also keep and play, pray for you, so that you all also get the time to reach here. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my story and see where my journey is heading. If you're interested in partnering with me, there's more information on this DVD that says how you can do that, and I'd love to connect with you in the future. Thank you.